I'm Dr. David Henry with the Community Oncology Journal, speaking to you today from the American Society of Hematology 2011 meeting in San Diego. And sitting with me is Dr. Michael Auerbach, who is Clinical Professor of Medicine at Georgetown University. Dr. Auerbach has long been studying and reporting on intravenous iron, and at this meeting he presented a study on the use of intravenous iron and I'd like to turn to him and ask him to describe what that study was about and what it showed. Uh, about two and a half years ago, a new intravenous iron preparation was approved for use in anemia of chronic kidney disease and iron deficiency. Um, this iron is called ferromoxitol, uh, brand name Ferahim. Uh, and this iron was unique in that it could be administered at a relatively high dose of 510 milligrams, the approved dose uh, in this country today, in 17 seconds or more. That's orders of magnitude faster than any iron that... Um, so we, it's much faster, much than, the faster other, yes. than the other irons. We applied for and received an IND from the Food and Drug Administration to administer a full replacement dose, which I consider a thousand milligrams, in, in a short period of time. And uh, 15 minutes was selected by the Safety Review Board at the FDA as a reasonable speed. And what did you find? What we found was that the drug is, is, is administered seamlessly. The response rate <coughs> was 100%. There were no serious adverse events, but the mean hemoglobin rise at four weeks was two grams, which is close to an order of magnitude higher than uh, what was seen before, and, there were, and more than 30% of the patients had increments of greater than three grams. And the manufacturer often recommends at the 5, 10 milligram dose that you watch for blood pressure. Any blood pressure problems? We did not have any hypotension throughout the, throughout the study. There, um, there were no hemodynamic effects. The study was now shows you, you can yes. get with 15 minutes the full dose of 1,020 milligrams or 1,000 milligrams. Your, your career has been so uh, interesting with IV irons of all sorts. Could you just comment while we have you on what do you use IV iron for? outside of this trial, outside of any trial, and what irons do you use? Okay. Uh, well, I, I should start by saying that my, my position on this is polemic based on years of, of, of doing this. I don't yeah. use oral iron for iron deficiency anymore. I think uh, the toxicity profile of oral iron is so much worse than intravenous iron that I use intravenous iron for all cases of iron deficiency that are referred to me, including pregnancy, uh, menorrhagia, um, chemotherapy-induced anemia, and any situation where uh, an ESA is given, um, there is no contradictory evidence to the right. position that intravenous iron synergizes with ESAs when given. So it is my opinion that the use of ESAs without intravenous iron in patients who have transferrin saturations of 40 or less um, is... Anything suboptimal. But help, anything but helpful. Yeah. Okay. okay. So the irons that I, I use, um, three irons. Um, the one that in my clinical trial I, I use uh, second most frequently in my practice. The drug I use most is low molecular weight iron dextran. We just published um, the ability to give this drug as, a, again, a full dose replacement dose of 1,000 milligrams in one hour. There were no significant adverse events in 1,266 infusions now, in 888 patients. And this one, did you use a pre-med? Uh, again, no pre-med. No pre As a matter of fact, I, if, if, it, if anybody wants to take away anything from intravenous iron from listening to my diatribe, it would be that in the preponderance of published literature, the overwhelming majority of side effects appear to be due to the pre-medication, especially right. with, yeah. with diphenhydramine, which has a side effect profile all of its own, often mistaken, um, often attributed mistakenly to the iron. To the yeah. iron. So low molecular iron dextran, fine. Other iron dextran, other iron yeah, juice? Um, I use, uh, in the very rare patient, um, in, in the last two years, the answer to that question is no. Okay. 
There is an, um, it is important um, to know that low molecular weight iron dextran has the same code as high molecular weight iron dextran, a drug that has been specifically proscribed by the NCCN um, and removed from the formularies of the VA medical centers in the United States and its protectorates. Um, it, that drug, um, dexferum, side yes, yeah. dexferum uh, should be used only with caution. Well, I want to thank Dr. Auerbach for sharing all his experience uh, in his IV iron use and then this particular study of 1,020, 1,000 milligram, which he considers a nice replacement dose in the Farahim uh, study just presented here at ASH. I'm Dr. David Henry for Community Oncology Journal reporting from the American Society of Hematology Meeting 2011. <laughs>